Hi, hello, hi. So today I want to talk to you all about progesterone and transmasculine individuals. So I say transmasculine individuals because not everyone who is assigned female at birth and takes testosterone necessarily identifies as male. I could only speak from my own experiences as a trans man, so when I'm talking about this as a trans man, I mean like I'm talking about this as myself, but again, this applies to transmasculine folks in general. Before we get into this trigger warning, anatomy trigger warning talk of menstrual cycle, trigger warning needles, trigger warning depression, and anxiety. I wanted to make this video because it's a couple of times now where I either answer emails or I answer DMs or I answer Twitter questions about two things, actually. Firstly, getting your menstrual cycle once you've been on testosterone for a long time, either after going a long period without having it and being on testosterone or being on testosterone for like over a year and still getting your menstrual cycle at random. And I've also gotten DMs about progesterone. The reason being that progesterone is commonly what is prescribed to help with this issue in transmasculine individuals. It's supposed to stop your menstrual cycle, sometimes. This is a video of information, but also potentially of warning, because there's not a lot of research on, uh, on trans folk. So, progesterone. What is it? Progesterone is a hormone produced by the ovaries. It's produced after ovulation, sometimes it's called like the pregnancy hormone. It plays a role in getting pregnant and maintaining pregnancy. It gets the uterus to maintain the fertilized egg, but also is present even when you are not pregnant. Basically what it does is it stops the uterine lining from shedding. And as many of you know, that is pretty much what happens when you get your menstrual cycle. It is the lining of your uterus gets thick, gets ready for a baby, doesn't have a baby, and then sheds its skin. Progesterone stops that shedding process from happening, and that's also why it helps to maintain a fertilized egg, because you don't want to shed a uterus with a fertilized egg in it. So basically, real quick, that is what progesterone is. So before I get into my own personal experience with progesterone, where I live, there are three most common ways of taking progesterone. The first one being an oral pill that you take every day. Uh, so it's actually used as birth control, but you could take a version of it that is just progesterone, and then there's a version of it that's progesterone and estrogen. The one that they usually give to transmasculine individuals is the one that only has progesterone and doesn't have any estrogen in it. Usually when they have people taking the pill, you'll take it for the whole month and then not take it for a week or take sugar pills for a week, and this is to make sure that the person taking it continues to get their menstrual cycle. But again, with transmasculine individuals, they usually instruct you to just take it every day and not take a break from taking it. And the idea behind that is that if you just take it continuously, you shouldn't get your menstrual cycle. It's not 100%, but there is a high chance that you will stop your menstrual cycle eventually. Although you may bleed stronger for a little bit before that. We'll get there. The next way of taking progesterone is through an IUD. And IUD stands for intrauterine device. It is implanted in the uterus by a doctor, and it could last anywhere between three to five years in your uterus. It depends on which one you choose. There are two popular brands that we have here. I also just want to specify that there is a difference between a hormone IUD and a copper IUD. Both IUDs are used as, again, a form of contraception, a form of birth control. However, the copper IUD doesn't involve any hormones. So if you are getting an IUD to stop your menstrual cycle, it's not going to be a copper IUD. So I'm specifically talking right now about the hormone releasing IUD. There's one that releases progesterone directly into your uterus. With people who have hormonal IUDs inserted, statistically speaking, most people who have them are supposed to experience a decrease in their menstrual cycle. From what I read, in the first year, they're supposed to experience an 80% decrease in their menstrual cycle, unless you happen to be one of the lucky few who experiences an increase or almost a non-stop menstrual cycle or spotting. And then the last option, again, that I am aware of and that was available to me is an injection. It's injected once every three months and it is a slow release version of progesterone. And that was the one that I chose. Again, this one is supposed to eventually stop or dramatically decrease the frequency of your menstrual cycle. It's used for people who are anemic or who experience debilitating menstrual cycles or never ending menstrual cycles etc etc and usually there's a chance that you will experience bleeding for the first like six months like three to six months you're gonna be bleeding but then it's supposed to eventually slow down or stop altogether so these were the three options that were presented to me when I went to go see a doctor so this period of my life that I'm referring to is actually before I started testosterone 
This was in like 2014 or the very beginning of 2015 and I was really desperate to be on hormones but the waiting lists were so long. But in the meantime, I wanted to stop my menstrual cycle for a number of reasons. I was out as a trans man at the time but I was still afraid that my menstrual cycle could show up whenever because it happened so often and it lasted so long and I was self-conscious about having to carry like sanitary pads with me and tampons and stuff with me. Anyway, even sensory wise, wearing pads was very difficult for me because I am very touch repulsed, very sensation repulsed, especially by things that are not dry. It didn't work for me and I couldn't really use tampons because I was not shaped properly down there. I, they would just literally come out of my body, even if I did my best to insert them properly. I could go through like six attempts just to get one to stay in for a bit and it's just, it pff, didn't didn't work so. So I went and go see this doctor at this youth clinic and he suggested progesterone to me and he specifically suggested although he did offer the two other options, but they were less ideal for me. With the pill version, he told me that I had to take it at the exact same time every day because otherwise I risk bleeding spontaneously, which sounded terrible, especially given that I have ADHD and have a very, very, very bad memory. The other option presented to me was an IUD, which was absolutely out of the question for me because I was dysphoric, because I was not comfortable with having a doctor, especially a male doctor, all up in my business down there. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm, I'm working past a lot of barriers, I didn't like the permanence of it and that it had to stay in your uterus and if you wanted to remove it, you had to go to a doctor to remove it. So it placed a lot of power in the hands of the doctor and placed me in a vulnerable position where if I can't get a follow-up appointment, even if it's really urgent, even if I want it out of me right now, I don't get to do that. So um, yeah, no, there's nothing wrong with doing it. It's just for me personally, it made me feel a little stripped of my agency over my body. So. so then I was like, one injection every three months. That sounds fantastic. I don't have to remember to take it. It's an injection, so that makes me feel good because it makes me feel closer to being on testosterone for some reason, I don't know. So he did warn me that when you take the injection, there's a good chance for the first three to six months you'll experience an increase in bleeding, but then you should experience an ending in your menstrual cycle altogether or a dramatic decrease. I do not mean to scare anyone, especially if you plan on taking this or if you are on this currently. Everybody's body is different. I was anemic. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. And there is a long history of mental health struggles in my family. There's depression and anxiety, yes, but trigger warning, there's also a dense history of suicide in my family. So that might also come into play. I was not warned of the effects this could have on my mental health and for me that was the worst part. I'll start with the physical. I didn't just bleed for three to six months. I bled almost non-stop until I started testosterone. I started testosterone a year later, so for a year, but um, worse than that, I experienced a difference in my mental health. I've read that the chances of something like that happening are slim. Something like one or two percent who experience this side effect. It's usually people who are predisposed to struggle with their mental health. So not to be dramatic at all, but before I got this injection, granted this was years ago and my EDS had not flared up as badly as it did afterwards, but before I got this injection, I just had a lot more energy. Even when I felt exhausted, it's just my mental capacity was better. My physical tolerance was better. My mood was better. I just, I felt happy and motivated. And after getting this shot, it might be because I was bleeding so intensely. It might be because I was so disappointed with the severity with which I was bleeding and the pain that I was in and expecting there to be a relief and not experiencing a relief. But I personally think that um, progesterone really does have the ability to trigger intense depressive episodes. Not all of it is because of progesterone. A lot of it could just be because I was expecting this relief that I didn't get and I was bleeding a lot and I was really dysphoric. So I don't want to blame progesterone and say that it was the reason why I struggled from that point on. It's just, I do feel like it was a starting point. Um, so when it comes to EDS, for example, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, the connective tissue disorder that I have, I've heard from a couple of others that sometimes with EDS, the first flare up or the first time it gets really, really bad could be following a traumatic event. So for me, in this case, I had this hormonal traumatic event to my body that caused a really dangerous amount of blood to be leaving my body on a regular basis and an imbalance in my hormone production in general. So I after my progesterone shot, that year that I spent bleeding, I started to have more subluxations, which are partial dislocations, more sprains. I've always experienced these things, but it's just, they like tripled in frequency. So 
it could be that, you know, I took this injection, I was already predisposed for depression, I already had EDS, it's not like it made my EDS show up or it made my depression show up, but it was a trigger for both. And then the depression and the EDS and the gender dysphoria, one fed off the other, fed off the other, so it's just kind of like dominoes. Like the dominoes were already lined up, eventually a gust of wind was gonna come along and knock them over, but the progesterone was just like, boop, and then they all kind of went tumbling after, so. So it's not to say that progesterone will give you EDS and cause a never-ending depression or anything like that. I'm just saying, for me, it was a big choice. And I'm bringing this up because there may be others out there who have a family history of suicide or really severe depression or maybe EDS, who knows? And you might not be aware that this is something that can happen. I know a lot of other people who've also taken progesterone and they don't know why they start to feel depressed, and that is dangerous. I'm not sure what the official statistic is for the likelihood of developing depression after taking progesterone. This is partially because there's little to no research in trans health, like very little. If you're taking progesterone, just watch out because mental health might be an issue. It's not everyone, I'm not a doctor, but for me, it was a really big gamble. So now you might be wondering, well then what do we do? I wanna make a whole video about this, but just to give you a little closure at the end of this video, what I do now, because I am one of those people who even a year into being on testosterone started to get my menstrual cycle again, what I do now is I actually take Lupron. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, Lupron is the hormone blocker that's given to trans youth to halt puberty, basically. It's not super common for it to be prescribed to trans adults, but it's starting to become a little more common. And the version specifically that I take of Lupron is called Eligard. It's a version of it that needs to be injected once a month instead of once every three months, and it could be injected subcutaneously, which is good for me because I build scar tissue and intramuscular injections tend to cause a little more damage in my body. The downside is, depending on where you live or your insurance, it is very expensive for Lupron in a lot of places, including where I live. To get a three-month injection, it costs a thousand dollars. To get the one that's once every month, it's three hundred and seventy dollars. I happen to have insurance right now that covers ninety percent of the cost of the medication. That's the only reason why I'm able to afford taking it. University insurances cover it also, so that makes it much better. And if I couldn't afford Lupron, I would probably have to get a hysterectomy because there's absolutely no way that I could emotionally tolerate being on progesterone again, which is unfortunate because not being able to afford a medication shouldn't mean that your only other option is surgery and sterilization. I think that that's really messed up. That's a topic for another video, but just to let you know, I'm just informing you that this is an option that is available, that is very effective, and Lupron has had absolutely zero effect on my mental health. I do know that you could experience, I think it's osteoporosis. Your bones could get brittle if you're taking Lupron, but you're not on a different hormone because Lupron's going to basically stop your body from producing hormones, the ones that it produces naturally, but it won't stop whatever you're taking artificially. So I'm not having any of those issues because I take testosterone, but if I stopped taking testosterone, I can't continue to take Lupron. So I just wanted to present that to you as an alternative at the end of this video. So that's it. That is my experience with progesterone. Again, I'm so sorry if this video scared you. I don't mean for this video to be scary. I'm just telling you what happened when I took it and I wish someone had told me that that was a risk because it is not one I personally would have taken because I'm aware of my family history. I'm aware of my own mental health history. I know that I'm predisposed to being really sensitive to these type of things. So that's why I'm telling you this, but I know plenty of other trans men who have taken and continue to take progesterone and they felt totally fine. So let me know if you have any follow-up questions. I would be happy to answer them. You can go ahead and leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and a great week and you take care of yourselves. All right. Thanks. Bye.